Social Banking from GT Bank. Anywhere, anytime, any device. But not this one. Nigeria are the new champions of Africa. Faith in the once great Nigeria Super Eagles was at its lowest ebb. The fans had completely lost all enthusiasm for the team. The NFF, however, were eager to put all the years of disappointment behind them. So they cast their lot with former captain and assistant coach. Steven Okechuku Keshi. But you see, we were coming from a background of, uh, like you rightly said, uh, a team that didn't make uh, the last Nations uh, Cup that was hosted by Pretoria, Guinea and Gabon. And my expectations were quite high because uh, personally, uh, Keshi, uh, his producer, so Samson Siasia, Austin Egwavoyen, those are the guys that we all adored as uh, journalists, as young men who were coming up, they were icons in their own right. So, and um, when he qualified um, Togo for the World Cup, qualified Cote d'Ivoire for the Nations Cup, and was part of the team that also qualified Nigeria for one of the World Cups in 2002, I was quite excited and I had the belief that uh, we were going to do it. His task was simple, rebuild the team from scratch, and ensure that Nigeria at least qualified for the next Africa Cup of Nations tournament in South Africa. My expectation is to um, try and get a very good team for Nigerians, a team that Nigerians will be part of, um, make Nigerians happy, um, because it's long overdue. Nigerians crying that they don't have, they don't believe in Super Eagles anymore, they don't, it's not the same team anymore. And, we all feel the same, I feel the same too. So that was my, my first phase coming to the national team and uh, we continue from there. Keshi, true to his word, ensured that Nigeria qualified for the Nations Cup in South Africa with home-based players like Godfrey Obwabwana playing lead roles. Soon, people began to seriously consider just how well the team might perform in South Africa. The thing is, uh, anywhere I go, I deal with the home base players. Be it in Mali, Togo, I mix them up with the professionals that are willing to play, that are willing, they are committed to the game. And, and of course, I started as home base player here. Most of the 99.999 Super Eagles players or Nigerian players started from home. From the way the whole thing was going, we, we, we came to notice that he, he was actually going to give us a chance or when if we, from the, our training and everything, the way he's talking to us and he actually told us that if we really give him what he wants, there's nothing that will stop him from not playing us or not giving us our own opportunity to play. With all eyes on him, Keshi bravely elected to go to the tournament with 17 debutants, six of them home-based, a risk to say the least because we have a lot of talents. That's abundance of talent. You know, in the last year, that the, a year and a half that we worked with these players, I think we've seen some incredible players, you know, that have come through the fold and some are still here, some left. It's not that they're not good, you know, they got transferred and all that. And still, every day we come into camp, we continue seeing, you know, new players because everywhere you go, any venue you go and watch for games, you see. And the good thing about it, uh, he doesn't only focus you know, on the National League, you know, if he sees a good player, you know, he's walking on the street, he, you know, he invites him, he goes to a, just to watch a game and you see a player that he thinks, he brings him in. And then we've seen a lot of players like that, you know, coming from non-league non and they come and, you know, they, they, they still need time to grow, but at the same time they have that feel and say, okay, I should, you know, put that belief in them that, okay, I can make it if at this stage I can be invited to the national team. Sadly for Keshi and everyone else, the Eagles started slowly, 
struggling in the first three games of the tournament and finishing second in the group phase. Everybody was scared back home and both in camp, the tension or the pressure was high, but we believed in ourselves and it was like a gamble kind of a game that the, the pride game, everybody, the pride is at stake and everybody was like, then the rumor about uh, Mikel and Kolotori having gamble like who wins and all like that. So the whole thing now psyched everybody up like we can do it and there's no big, let's forget the big names and all that, let's just go and do it. In the quarterfinals of the Orange Africa Cup of Nations, with uh, Nigeria up against the three tournament favourites, Ivory Coast. Yeah, as the coach keeps saying to everybody, we should take each game gradually. We should not think of Cote d'Ivoire. All our game, all our plan is just to make sure we play. We, everybody in the team, believe we are going to beat Cote d'Ivoire, but Nigeria outside there, they don't believe in the team. Shot on goal! What a cracker! Straight through the goalkeeper. I was there, right there. Uh, when I looked at the, 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 the coach, Keshi, I asked him how far. And I knew he had done his homework. He had been, he, he, he indeed, Cote d'Ivoire was his launch pad of uh, professional football. So he knew the Agorians better than some of us did. People didn't understand that. And then this was a team that was almost like, pack your bags. So after this game, they're like, now nah, go, we go. Well, I just, uh, I think we, start, we were talking to each other, the players and I, um, exchanging ideas, what to do, what not to do. And against, um, against Cote d'Ivoire, I just told them to be themselves, just go out there and have fun. And that's what they did. And it wasn't about to get any easier. The Eagles then had to face the elephants of Cote d'Ivoire. Had the Eagles bitten or pecked at more than they could chew? Everyone expected the elephants to trample on the Eagles. As it turned out, the Eagles had other plans. In a pulsating match, the Eagles outmuscled, outfought, and outplayed the Ivorians to record an outstanding, unforgettable victory. With Sunday Mba, a home base player, firing a memorable winner. We were playing 1 1 and and I was seriously looking at the time and I was seeing the time was really, the time the time was ticking very fast, like 70 something minutes, I guess. So I'll be 80 minutes and I was like, I needed to do something. Now, it's, now is the time for me to show myself or prove myself or make my name ring a bell or so. So I just took the game, the ball like that. I just, something in me was telling me to go, go, go. And <laughs> that was it. From struggling to make their way to the quarterfinals to being the favourites to win the Nations Cup, it was a tale of transformation so drastic and unexpected, we almost couldn't believe it if we weren't telling it to ourselves. Absolutely, we knew we were going to win the Cup after that. It was not even after that. We knew from the start that we were going to win the Cup, but it was not going to be easy because there will be hiccups. Nothing good comes easy. Uh, but Nigerians didn't maybe Majority didn't believe, but along the line, the belief system increased. And when your belief system increased, if you were having 80% or let's say 30% support and it suddenly jumped up to like 75, 80, you also saw that the spirit of those people, the God of those people will also be with you. And so it was exciting when Nigerians were now more supportive of the Super Eagles. The team talk was like, ah, we've, got, we've kind of suffered all this while, all this all through from the first game to this time now and we'll lose it. We just have to fight more and this is the final one and if we win this everybody will race or something. The team would go on to deliver a 4-0 bashing of Mali, ensuring that for the first time in 13 years the Super Eagles of Nigeria would contest in the final of the Nations Cup competition. Good ball as well. Now is the second coming up for Nigeria. Yes, is the answer. It's a day. Eminike this time turning provider and Victor Moses involved once again. Sets it up for Eminike. Takes the deflection. Eminike is now the top goal scorer at the 2013 Orange Africa Cup of Nations. That is fourth of the tournament. He's fifth for country. And Nigeria are three goals to the good. Here's another beauty of a pass for Musa.
Musa. Nigeria looking for a fourth. Musa it is! Four it is! A commanding display! We, as our aim at the beginning of the tournament is to make sure we get to the final. So when we believe, when we win the Code events, everybody now started to say, ah, yeah, Nigeria can do it. But we still know that it's going to be a tough match against Malia. So we don't relax, we keep working hard to make sure we get there. For many, it all seemed just right. For others, the doubts understandably remained. All of Nigeria, however, was in agreement that winning this title was going to be the biggest achievement of the national team in recent memory. I think what I felt was that even at my own time in Super Eagles, I don't think we ever played that good. I don't think so. We had a great team, but play the way the boys played against Cote d'Ivoire in South Africa, I'm not sure we did, we did that. And, and seeing these young players coming together to play together for the first time, you know, just um, all I was saying is thank you, God. The highly anticipated final came around and a stubborn Burkina Faso was the only obstacle between the Super Eagles and the African title. Emerging star Sunday Mba fired the winning goal in the 40th minute when referee Jamil Amoudi of Algeria sounded the final whistle. 19 years of pain were over. I was so excited. You, you can see from my celebration, I could never say anything again. I was just screaming like a madman or something. Scoring in the Nations Cup final, it's not easy. It's a really good long way to help my career. So. No, the, 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 the Stallions, they, they were comfortable that they had gotten to the final. It was their first ever final. There was no way they would have beaten us down. It was written already. It was written in the sky. Even the goal we scored came out of the blue. I don't know how Sunday bad did it, but you, if you see the, 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 the foray, it, it didn't look like something you get in the training ground. It was just a moment of magic. And you know, in Africa, there, there is the one we call the Juju goal. When such a goal comes, you hardly lose a game. It had been nearly two decades of hurt, of false dawns and the twinkling and dying of stars. But the Super Eagles, were once again kings of Africa. I don't know to spread. I don't even. I don't. I can't think. I can see two, three players because everywhere was jam packed, crowd, a lot of people coming inside. We, the dressing room was full. At least maybe more than three hours inside the dressing room was still filled. Out. Let's go. Let's pray. Let's pray and leave. But thank God for everything. The wait was long. The road to victory was narrow, and the challenges were many. But at the end of it all, coach Stephen Keshi proved his doubters wrong. In many ways, the triumphs of 1994 and 2013 were very similar. But of course, there were differences. Uh, if you ask me to pick, I will pick everybody because, <laughs> but I will start with uh, Vincent Yama. It was, was massive. Over oh, Peter It was massive. It was very, very massive. Joseph Yubu, maturity, you cannot, you cannot compare it to anyone because that was key also. I mean, we needed to have that single mindedness that we we're going to do this. I mean, Mikel Obi in the midfield, I mean, who in the 1994 squad could upstage him now is fantastic. Victor Moses, how? The guy is extremely talented. And Sondemba, from coming, didn't play the first, second, third game, coming, I mean, you saw what he started doing. These are stars in their own right who could crack into that. Even Gabriel Ruben, I believe, if not for the initial injury he had, Godfrey Obabona, excellent player in the heart of the defense. Of, of he could play as well as, he could play on the right full back position. He could play in the heart of the defense, just like a Guavoin. These are players you want. Kenneth Omero, did you see the way he was playing at his age? The guy's just an under-21 player. Fantastic. These are players who could crack into the main team and, 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 and do the nation proud. 
any day. Even Ahmed Musa, his pace on the wing is excellent when he's going. He didn't have a particularly fantastic tournament, but he will crack into that team like Finidi Judge did. You know, those are, those are players who you can compare and say, yes, this team is comparable. The team of uh, 1994, we were very together. We were like brothers, you know. We, the unit was there. We were functioning well. There was a lot of respect, a lot of love, passion for the game. And that's what I'm trying to bring back to the team here. The team, I'm beginning to see a lot of commitment that we had in those days, 1994. It's coming gradually into this team. And that mutual respect that we need to share and tell ourselves the gospel truth. You're not doing well. You're doing good. And if we can have that and just then it will flow. And I think it's coming. Um, it's going to take a while, but uh, we'll get there. It seemed like the fairy tale wouldn't end. That is, until Stephen Keshi threw the victory party into disarray by announcing his resignation. The tension, doubts, and incessant questions over his ability by those who gave him the job had taken their toll. And the regime of any football federation is hinged on the success of the national teams. You remember the Lulu administration? The one we came back from, uh, from uh, South Africa, the worker, he was gone. Even the chairman that he took to South Africa, took them there, who's, all of them. When they came back, he didn't get one vote. You know, he was voted out. So I, I don't think there was anything wrong in the NFF trying to ask questions, getting, what is the problem, what can we do? Up to the point that even one of the draws that they had, they said, look, we want to encourage you. Okay, we are paying full bonus. Do, do something. What? He said they were interfering. He said they don't want anybody to interfere. They didn't believe in him. At that point, I wouldn't believe in you. You have to do, make me believe in you. Keshi had suffered in Mali. He understood what administrators are like. And even before the, the Nations Cup, I mean, before the final, he was talking about why administrators were not respecting African coaches or indigenous coaches. So he had a message he was consistently hammering. Very few people wanted to listen. But he was gradually sinking in that message and telling them that um, we must begin to respect our own. We must start building our own. We must lay our treasures at home because that's where the treasure will uh, perhaps give us a, a benefit or value. Just as importantly, the issues between Keshi and the NFF were resolved. What the NFF always did, which I'm aware of, is that after every game, there was a meeting to review the, the game. Where did we get it wrong? Where did we get it right? How do we approach the next game? And so, at times, some people who attend these meetings, I mean, football is a passion game. At times, you could be passionate. Some people who attend these meetings will come out and spread rumors that are not true. I mean, you don't expect to be discussing football that, boy, boy that game, when we don't we finish, how come we drew it? I mean, people will express emotion. People will talk. You will talk, I will shout, you will shout, I will shout. And then at the end of the day, no, it's, I don't think there was, a, there was anything about firing Keshi as far as I was concerned. There, there were rumors, which I also heard. But from my vantage position, as the media officer of the, of the national team, I didn't see anything like that. We were focused. And so, the team returned home to the waiting hands of millions of Nigerians still basking in the euphoria of what had just happened. The African Cup of Nations was back on Nigerian soil after 19 years. It was almost unbelievable. The federal government, state governments, various multinationals and philanthropists fell over themselves to reward the heroes. Well, they prepared the team very well, no doubt about it. Nigerian Football uh, Federation went the whole hog. Of course, they too know that uh, if the Eagles are winning, they can, be, they can make money, and their, cause, their records can also uh, be glittering. It can be said of them that during their time, they won the Nations Cup. Like one of them jokingly said to me, you see, all of you guys who are saying that we are illegal, illegal. If you had thrown us out, could we have won the Nations Cup for you? An illegal body winning Nations Cup. Are we still illegal? I said that's a matter of uh, <laughs> perception. <laughs> It 
it, it may just be the start. They, 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 they look young. Uh, they have potentials. We have to keep working at them. Uh, I've seen them a couple of times. They, they, there's some discipline, you know. Um, they owe some allegiance to Keshi, especially those who are from the domestic league. Um, especially youth, you know, especially youth. If there's some uh, stability, you know, maybe Keshi signs a four-year contract, want to respect it. Um, we, we have, we, we develop the culture of not believing that it has to be victory, victory, victory. We can forgive some um, uh, defeats along the way and have some faith in them. We may just go for it. With the Nations Cup title in the bag, attention is now on the future. Can Nigeria prevent another long wait for the Nations Cup title? Can the Super Eagles finally go on to rule the continent for an extended period? And more importantly, how successful can this team, under the leadership of Stephen Keshi, go on to be? Nigeria were beaten in the final in 1984, 88 and 90, but not this one. Nigeria are the new champions of Africa.